Welcome to Journeys Lesson 11, Technology Wins the Game by Mark Andrews. The genre of this story is informational text. Informational text gives facts and other information about a topic. As you read, look for headings that begin sections of text with related information, photographs and captions, and graphics such as diagrams that help explain the topic. As we read, we want to be thinking about our essential question, how do inventions help athletes? Almost everyone loves a good game. However, it's not just athletic ability or skill that helps sports players win. Many other things can contribute to a winning team or player. One of those things is the use of technology. Technology has made our lives easier and better in many ways. In sports, technology can help all types of athletes perform better. I spot our first heading. It's all in the design. Now remember, a heading lets us know what that section of text is going to be about. So we know this section is going to be about design. If you like sports and science, being an engineer might be the job for you. Engineers are scientists who make sports more fun to play and to watch. They design better materials, surfaces, and equipment. They help keep athletes safe from injury. A sports engineer has probably helped improve your favorite sport. Our next heading says the science of sports engineering. So we know that that is what the next section will be about. Some sports engineers study the way athletes move when they play different sports. An engineer might watch a soccer player to see how the player's foot strikes the ball. This can lead to ideas about soccer shoes, the soccer ball, or even the soccer field. Engineers use these ideas to improve the game in some way. The first step for a sports engineer is to identify a problem in a sport, something to be improved. Almost anything can be improved. Then the sports engineer comes up with a possible solution. Next, he or she creates a model. The model may include a new kind of material. The new idea is then tested in a laboratory to see how well it works. Finally, the new product is tested by athletes. If it works well, soon athletes around the world will start to use it. And at the bottom of this page, we have a graphic that shows us the sequence of events. Now, as we were reading that paragraph, we had a lot of clue words that let us know that we were talking about sequence of events. When we say sequence of events, we just mean the order in which things happen. So notice the author used words like first, next, then, and finally. That lets us know that things are happening in a particular order. And this graphic at the bottom of the page also shows us the same thing in a different way. The top one is the problem. Remember, the sports engineer first had to spot a problem that needed to be solved. And then underneath that, we have an arrow pointing to an idea for the solution. So first the engineer saw a problem, then they came up with a possible idea to solve that problem. Then we have an arrow going down to the next step, which was create a model. So remember they saw the problem, came up with a possible idea, then they created a model that incorporates their idea for solving the problem. And then we have one last arrow going down to the bottom part, which is test. So they spotted the problem, they came up with an idea, they created a model of the idea, and then they have to finally 
test it out and see if it works. So this handy little graphic shows us the steps in order that a sports engineer uses to help improve a certain sport. Our next heading is changing the game. Let's take a look at tennis. This is a sport where sports engineers have made several changes. What a racket. Tennis rackets have changed a lot. When the sport began, tennis rackets were made out of wood. Then, in the 1960s, a metal racket was developed. Metal rackets were stronger and lighter than wood. Today, rackets are made out of different materials mixed together. These rackets are very light and provide more power than the old ones. The ball moves faster than ever. Today's rackets also have a larger head or string area than before. This makes it easier for the tennis player to reach more balls. A player can also control the ball better and make it move in different ways. Our next section is called more bounce to the ball. Tennis balls have come a long way too. The first tennis balls were made of leather or cloth stuffed with wool or horse hair. These balls did not bounce very high. In the 1870s, rubber was first used to make tennis balls. These balls bounced better, but the cloth that covered the ball would fall off. Today, tennis balls are still made of rubber. First, two matching half-shell pieces of rubber are joined together. This makes the hollow, round shape of the ball. Second, two pieces of felt are wrapped around the ball. Third, a rubber seam is added to keep the felt covered together. Finally, the balls are put in a can that is under pressure. This helps keep them bouncy. The whole process ensures that each tennis ball bounces exactly the same way. Where the ball bounces is up to the player. So notice on page 406, we have a photograph of a tennis player who is just about to hit that tennis ball with his lovely racket. And then on page 407, we have a graphic image showing us the process of making a tennis ball. So it's giving us a picture image of what we just read in the paragraph above that. Notice how each step in the process is numbered. Our next heading is higher and faster. Sports engineers help athletes perform in just about every sport. Track and field athletes run, jump, and throw. Sports engineers help these athletes run faster, jump higher, and throw farther. They design new and better track and field equipment, surfaces, and clothing jump higher. Have you ever watched a pole vaulter at the Olympics? A good pole vaulter must have speed, strength, and the right pole. The pole must be flexible and strong enough to bend and lift the vaulter over the bar. Poles used to be made of wood. These were very stiff and heavy. Later, poles were made of more flexible bamboo. Then, Engineers designed poles made of aluminum. Today, poles are made of fiberglass and are very light. They bend easily. The more the pole bends, the farther the vaulter sails through the air. Run faster. What makes a runner fast? Athletic ability and good training are most important. Engineers have designed new track surfaces and clothing to help. Track runners used to run on grass fields. When it rained, the tracks would become soggy and slippery. Now, most runners run on all-weather tracks. These are man-made surfaces with a top coating of rubber chips. The rubber chips make the runner's shoes bounce off the track better. This increases speed. New kinds of clothing also help runners speed up. Many track stars don't wear shirts and shorts like they used to. They wear lightweight bodysuits that fit tightly. When they run in these suits, the wind does not slow them down. Every fraction of a second counts. 
Down here at the bottom of the page, we have two photographs, and it's titled, A New Kind of Racing. The Boston Marathon is the oldest and most famous marathon race in the world. Each year, thousands of athletes run the 26.2 mile course through the hilly streets of Boston and neighboring towns. In 1975, Bob Hall finished the marathon in a different way. He wheeled his way to the finish line. Bob Hall was the first official wheelchair athlete to complete the Boston Marathon. He finished the race in less than three hours, faster than most runners. Notice we have some captions telling us what is in each photograph. So if we look at the photograph on the top right, we have a caption underneath that lets us know what that photograph is showing us. And it says, Bob Hall used a simple wheelchair in the Boston Marathon. Next, let's look at the photograph at the bottom and the caption on the left. It says, today, wheelchair athletes compete with high-tech wheelchairs. And you can see the difference in those two wheelchairs, right guys? Our next heading is In These Shoes. Sports engineers have also designed shoes to make athletes faster and to give them more support. Athletes need different kinds of shoes for different sports. If you want to win, you need to wear the right shoes. A history of running shoes. In ancient times, runners ran barefoot. As time went on, athletes began to run in sandals. Soon, the sandal wearers were winning most of the races. The running shoe was born. The next big change came in the 1830s in England. The first running shoe with a rubber sole was introduced. Rubber soles were light and comfortable. They also easily gripped the ground. Spikes were added to running shoes as early as 1852. In the 1920s, a German named Addy Dassler improved the design and sold the first modern running shoes with spikes. Spikes give runners a better grip. Today, shoemakers and engineers better understand the science of running. Running shoes are made for every style of runner and any surface. Engineers know that runners need shoes that are strong and flexible. So if we look down at the bottom of that page, we have a graphic that is a timeline of the changes in running shoes. So a timeline shows us events that happened in time order. In this case, giving us the years that things happened. So notice the first thing on our timeline is 5th century BC. And that was when runners in ancient Greece would use bare feet and sandals. And then we move to the 1830s and that's when they used shoes with rubber soles for a better grip. The next spot on our timeline is the 1850s, which was when they first started using spikes in the running shoes. Then we move on to the 1920s with the modern spiked running shoes. And then the last date on our timeline is 1972 when they added extra cushioning in the heels and soles. Timelines are excellent ways to show when things happened. Our next section is called Extra Bounce and we have a photograph of some spiky shoes there. Let's read about them. Long jumpers need shoes that give the athletes extra bounce. The soles must be firm but able to bend. These shoes have metal spikes in the front of the shoe only. This helps the jumper grip the ground and spring from the toes right before the jump. Underneath that, we have another photograph of some different looking shoes and it's titled Quick Movement. Soccer shoes have plastic or metal cleats or rounded spikes on the bottom. Cleats keep soccer players from slipping in the dirt, grass, and mud. Soccer players need to change direction quickly. Without cleats, soccer would be a slower, sloppier game. 
So it's interesting, both of these types of sneakers have some type of spikes, but the ones for long jumpers have very sharp spikes and the spikes are only in the toe part of the shoe, right? So that they can grip the ground and spring from their toes right before their jump. Whereas the soccer shoes have spikes that are more rounded and they cover the whole entire bottom of the shoe so that the soccer players aren't slipping all over the place as they try to run around quickly. It's interesting the different types of shoes that are needed by players of different sports, right guys? Our next heading is play safely. Athletes also need special equipment and clothing to protect them from injury. Sports can be dangerous and professional athletes often take risks. Let's read about football helmets. Over 100 years ago, football players did not wear helmets. Ouch! Then in the 1900s, players began to wear leather helmets. These early helmets did not provide much comfort or protection. Changes were needed. First, more padding was added. Second, a face mask was added to protect the nose and teeth. Also, the top of the helmet was made more round. This allowed a blow to slide off the helmet rather than strike head on. Next, in 1939, the first plastic helmet was invented. Today's football helmets are made of a special plastic that is light and strong. The helmet design protects players from head injuries. Some football helmets are being tested with tiny computer chips inside them. If a player hits his head, the chip sends a message to a computer. Scientists hope that these chips could tell coaches when a player needs medical help. At the top of the next page, we have a couple more photographs. And this section is titled, Other Safety Features. We can tell from the photographs that we see that we're gonna be reading about skiing and bicycling. Some ski clothes are made to help skiers in trouble. Sometimes backcountry skiers get lost or are injured miles away from anyone. Sports engineers developed special sensors for their clothing. The sensors send information about a skier's location. A rescue team receives the information, which helps the team find skiers who have fallen or are buried under the snow. Brightly colored jackets and vests, called reflective wear, make bicyclists easier to see in the dark. Our next heading is Just for Fun. The next time you play your favorite sport, think about some of the equipment you use. Think about the kind of surface on which you are standing, running, or jumping. Notice how your sports shoes look or feel and help you perform. Now that you have read about sports engineering, you can think about how technology has helped to improve your sport. Technology not only makes our lives easier and better, it also makes our lives a lot more fun. I hope you enjoyed reading Technology Wins the Game, and I'll see you next time. Bye.